Привет, друзья! G'day guys, welcome to another video here on Soviet Lens Reviews. Today, not actually doing a review, something a little bit different. I'm going to be walking everyone through the process of purchasing a Soviet lens. Now, this is very important. In fact, before you even start thinking about collecting your own Soviet lenses, you need to know how to buy one. So let's jump into it. Now you might think to yourself, well, why do I need to learn how to buy something? I just go on eBay and buy it. Well, that's where you're wrong because a, the purchase process of a Soviet lens is oftentimes more important uh, and more critical to the final success of your photos and the final quality of your photos than anything else in the process of using a, a Soviet or, or other vintage lens. So let's go ahead and take a look why that is. First up, you want to purchase a Soviet lens, of course. Your first step is to decide which lens you want. Same as when you're buying a new lens or a modern lens for cameras. Uh, for me, for this tutorial, I know that I already have lenses ranging from 20 millimeters through to uh, 80 millimeters. And so I know that I want something a little bit longer than that, a little bit more telephoto, uh, after having a quick look at what, so, what uh, lenses are actually available uh, and a good resource to do this, in fact, is this website right here. It's called zenitcamera.com and of course it is in Russian but you can translate it to English uh, using Google Chrome very easily and this has a list of uh, all the lenses that uh, the KMZ, the Krasnogorsk Mechanikski Zavod plant made, otherwise known as Zenit. And this is a good way to, uh, to start off. So as I mentioned, because I, I wanted a lens around, you know, around the 100 to 200 mil focal range, uh, I've actually decided to go for a Jupiter 6 in today's adventure. So Jupiter 6, it's a 180 mil lens, f2.8. Okay, that sounds pretty good. And I know from my own personal experience that, you know, this lens, it does exist. It was made uh, commercially. So you've just got to be a little bit careful because a lot of these lenses uh, that were uh, sort of uh, put onto paper by these various Soviet design bureaus and lens manufacturing plants, they never actually ended up being produced or they were ended up produced in, you know, numbers of one or two. So there we go. Our next step, of course, is to do your research. So I now know that I'm going to buy a Jupiter 6, but what next? Uh, because this is very, very important. You need to know when the lens was produced. You need to know what factories made it. You need to know uh, that because, you know, the Soviet lens factories, they're today's equivalent of camera brands for the Soviet Union. So effectively, you might be buying a lens from one factory that's, you know, the, the canon of the Soviet lens factory world. Um, and then another factory might have made the exact same lens, but that other factory was the modern equivalent of, you know, like a Yongnuo, uh, even though they were the same actual lens. That is how high the quality control differences were back in the Soviet Union between factories. And of course, you need to know how rare it was it was and what it sold for recently. So let's go ahead and jump in now. What I've done is I've just uh, plugged in Jupiter 6, uh, the lens that I want to purchase into Google and anyone can do this. You want to bring up a, a few points of reference whenever researching any lens. Now, these are some of my favorite ones aside from just you know personal reviews from people that you don't know. All photo lenses and these sort of lens database sites are actually very good because they tell you a lot about the lens. Um, so immediately from this website, we can get a bit of a gauge on the average price. That's very important. Now it says 290 there. Um, I find that this can be a little bit outdated, this average price. So, you know, I would add sometimes up to 50% uh, to this price as, you know, these lenses typically go up in price uh, with inflation. Uh, what else can we see? So we can see that the first year that the Jupiter 6 was produced was in 1958. That's quite important. So it's worth remembering that 1958, this is the year, or, or I guess um, the decade, the 50s, when we started to see, uh, started to see lens coatings, uh, coatings on elements of the lenses. So before this, um, 
before the 50s, you know, most lenses that were made in the Soviet Union were typically, you know, the glass wasn't coated. Um, and coating, of course, and multi-coating helps glass and helps uh, with contrast, with light scattering, with a lot of things. And generally speaking, you, you pretty much always want um, a lens with at least a single layer coating. And we can also take a look at the MTF charts. This is another very important resource. Um, so you'll find this some, sometimes written down as opposed to uh, shown in a chart. But basically what this MTF chart is, is this is the sharpness of the lens, okay? So we can see from this that in the center of the frame, that is, um, so millimeters is basically center of the frame, uh, where left is the very center. At the center, the Jupiter 6 uh, is managing to pull 30 lines per millimeter. So that means that effectively uh, 30 lines are distinguishable from each other uh, within one millimeter in the center of the frame. Out to the corners of the frame, uh, looks like around about 80 or so. And compared to other Soviet lenses, I can tell you that this is not a particularly sharp lens. Uh, that is instantly distinguishable from this chart alone. So when you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, what is a sharp lens? Well, typically speaking, if these Soviet MTF charts uh, start off around the 50 mark, then around the 50 mark, 40 to 50, that is uh, what modern day photographers would kind of consider usably sharp. Obviously not as sharp as today's lenses. So I can see that around 30, that means I shouldn't be expecting the you know, the, the sharpest picture uh, in the world from the Jupiter 6. And of course, it's always great, whether it's here on this website or on other websites, to actually take a look at some, uh, some example pictures from the Jupiter and just, just see what it can do. So, you know, we, we can see some pictures here and uh, people have definitely got some good pictures with the Jupiter. And you can also see a general rating, which is why I do certainly like all photo lenses. Now, you also should be looking at uh, ideally Zenit camera if Zenit made your lens because this is just such a, such a good resource for anyone who's looking to purchase a lens. You know, it, it will tell you things like this light transmittance coefficient is a very good indicator of how bright the lens actually is irrespective of its aperture. So just because this photo lens is, it stops down to f2.8, that doesn't mean that it's going to let the same amount of light in as a modern f2.8. And this is how you're going to tell this light transmittance coefficient. So 0 0.75 means that, um, I need to actually double check this, but, I, but it basically means 25% of the light is not going to get through. Um, and generally speaking, 0 0.75 is not a super high light coefficient. Um, the good ones from the Soviet Union, will be, this will be 0.9. So your multi-coded, your Mir 24Ms, uh, your, your Zenitar ME1s, this is gonna be 0.9. And it generally correlates with, um, uh, with the coatings that, that were on the glass. So outside of that, I mean, look, there, there is always lots to research, but the only other thing that you should really uh, pay attention to is the years of production. Uh, so production years, this has no data which is uh, uh, a little bit inconvenient, but uh, you know you know that it was produced again from this website from 1958. It was produced for a few years, so it's, um, um, it's not super common, not one of the most uh, commonly produced lenses in the Soviet Union. After that, we've also found out that uh, only Zenit made this lens as well. So uh, we don't need to worry about picking which factory uh, made this lens. But generally speaking, you don't want Arsenal, you don't want Valdai. They're the two factories which you should uh, probably avoid. Okay, but look, we have got this lens. Uh, we're pretty confident in it. We know what we should expect to pay. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to our next step, which is, of course, hitting eBay. So on eBay, this is where the fun really begins. What we're going to do is bring eBay up 
and we're going to start to look at some Jupiter lenses. So I'm going to really go through this process um, exactly how I would. So this isn't going to be, uh, you know, abridged at all. So we've put into the search Jupiter 6 180mm f2.8. Um, three lenses from the looks of it have come up. Uh, so we can see there's not too much else there. Occasionally it's also good just to, you know, broaden your search a little bit. Jupiter 6, 180 millimeters. Maybe someone's, yeah, there you go. As we can see, not everyone uh, names their lenses in the same way. So play around with what you're searching for. And as we can see here, um, you know, this is uh, showing us a few more results. And uh, even these ones, which we can see with the uh, with the cases as well, which is positive. So we don't have too many lenses to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and open up all of the all of the ones that look like uh, uh, you know like we want. Okay, so here we go. Now, first thing to check serial number. Uh, serial number tells us lots about the actual lens. Sometimes people will have it in the description. Uh, do, 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 do they have it in this description? It does not look like it. If they don't have it in the description, then on most Soviet lenses, you'll find the serial number right here along the um, along the kind of inner cap of the lens. So we can see there, this is, you might just think of random scribble. No, it's not random scribble. This is the plant marking. So this is how you know that this particular lens that this eBay seller is selling was manufactured in this plant. This plant is KMZ, the good one. Krasnogorsk Mechanicsky Zavod, aka Zenit. And it's got the uh, Cyrillic Jupiter 6 there as well. Um, so we can actually... Uh, it's hard to see. So this seller hasn't taken a particularly good picture of the serial number here, which is already a bit of a red flag. Um, when sellers don't show you the serial number, it, it means that you're actually lacking crucial data about this lens because lenses, um, let's say from the late 90s, or sorry, the early 90s uh, and onwards, you know, number one, once it's past 91, it's not a Soviet lens. And number two, quality control in the Soviet Union uh, and later the early Russian Federation really fell off a cliff. So generally speaking, you do not want to touch anything from the 90s. Uh, but yeah, so we can't actually find this lens's uh, serial number. We can sort of see this, which I mean, I don't know, maybe looks like a, maybe looks like a zero, zero. The only other red flag here is that this image we can see is from Avito. Now, Avito is a, a again, an, like a kind of Russian eBay equivalent. It, it's uh, across more than just Russia, of course, but uh, again, a little bit of a red flag that uh, this person's using Avito watermarked images on eBay. So not convinced with this one. I would feel comfortable... Uh, only if I contacted this seller, which I actually already have done, um, and asked him to send a specific picture of the lens. Also, in these photos, we are missing uh, any photo of the lens's aperture blades. And Soviet lens aperture blades sometimes can be a little bit over-oiled, which can affect the photos. So that's definitely something that I would ask this seller uh, about to send a picture. Okay, on to our next one. Price, a little bit more expensive. Um, what else have we got? M39, so an adapter M42. M39, of course, is the uh, original mount for the Jupiter 6. Uh, M42 is what this can convert to uh, just without anything except for a little conversion ring. Uh, no, no glass conversions. So welcome in my store. We can see here everything works properly. No dust mold scratches, glass is clean. That's always good. Serial number. Okay, we can see the seller is serious. So serial number 003032. So this means it was a very early, uh, very early production lens. Um, typically speaking, if you find a 00 serial number of any lens that was produced from the 60s onwards, that's super rare. And um, yeah, definitely 
uh, generally speaking, a positive. So, da, 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 da. it does come with a case. Photos are not the best here. Uh, as we can see, the filters that it comes with, I mean, nothing else really to look for there. Okay, so here we go, number 003032. That's great. And this is a great shot of the glass. We can see how kind of dirty or clean at least the front of the glass is. And it's not too bad. You know, a, f a little few specks of dust uh, for a lens from, you know, potentially 1958 is not, uh, is not the worst thing in the world. So this lens, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I think, you know, price is slightly on the higher end. Um, you know, I could I could definitely buy this. So we'll add this one to the watch list. Let's move on to our next lens. So here we go. Uh, um, now this one, 328 US dollars. Everything is working according to this. Serial number 000974. Nothing particularly crazy there either. And was this the same seller? Yeah, so this was actually the same seller. So here is where we really want to try and differentiate, you know, what's the difference between these two lenses? Which one should we buy? Because they're both the exact same lens, made in the exact same plant. And I would say immediately, uh, looking here, this is the one that, that I would pick between these two, solely for this picture. As we can see here, this picture, the lens, you know, it, it's just got more, you can see, visibly see more dust on the glass. Um, and you never know which specs here might be inside uh, or beneath that front element, which obviously makes them um, impossible to get out unless you actually take the lens apart. So this looks like very clean glass. Um, looks like it's in pretty good condition. It's been kept perhaps slightly better. You know, it's a lens from the 60s, so it's still going to be a little bit old. This looks like a, a good, solid lens. So definitely add that one to the watch list as well. Okay, so here we go. We've got another one uh, from a different eBay seller. Uh, early Russian lens. Jupiter, duh, 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 serial number 001351. So it's quite an early one. You can see it does come with the uh, the case as well. That's definitely a plus. And I actually love storing my Soviet lenses in cases that uh, are original where possible. And we can see here, I mean, it looks fairly normal. That's a good picture of the aperture blades. They look like perfect aperture blades. I can see serial number there. Not a great deal of glass. Some sample photos, that's even better. These look like real sample photos that this person's actually taken as well. Looks quite good, to be honest. Um, you know, the postage is uh, very high, but does not look bad at all. So, definitely liking the look of this one. And here we go. We've got another one from Photo Sniper, different apparently. So this one's three hundred and twenty-eight dollars. This one's two hundred and ninety-five dollars. So you've just like immediately you might be gravitating just towards this two hundred and ninety-five dollar one. Uh, but I would actually advise the opposite because these sellers, particularly guys who, if you look at this seller's web page, he probably sells a lot of lenses. Yes, he does. So he sells a lot of lenses based in uh, Moscow. So he obviously knows what he's doing with lenses. And, you know, from my experience, these really experienced guys over in Russia who sell these lenses, they know, you know, they know what a lens is worth. They will sell a good copy for a higher price than, you know, their copy that might have a, a scratch or two in it. Um, so definitely worth keeping that in mind. Now let's read about this. Maybe there's um, some other piece of info about it. Uh, cosmetical condition is good use, mechanics and glasses is excellent, duh, duh, duh. rare condition, everything smooth, clean and clear. So I think perhaps what uh, what this guy's actually put this lens's price down, oh, oh, okay. Okay, wait. Now what I don't particularly like, well, that I've just spotted here, um, and I'm 
I'm not sure whether it is just a light reflection or not, but we can see down here uh, what, I don't know, it may, uh, may just be a reflection or it may be something sort of within the actual lens elements, within the glass, or it could also be the, uh, the coating uh, starting to come off a little bit. Sometimes it does look like that. Whereas if we actually look at, uh, you know, this, this lens, I mean, you can see there, it's obviously taken in basically the exact same spot. But this lens has these little bubbles. And if I was a betting person, I would say that that is exactly, those little bubbles are why this seller has priced this lens at $295 and not $328. And my absolute advice is to, where you can buy a lens as perfect as possible because little aberrations like this in the glass, if that's what it is, uh, can actually have a very visible impact on your photos, particularly in high contrast scenes with lots of light. Um, if the coating started to come off, then then you will know about it in your photo. You'll lose contrast. You'll you know potentially lose dynamic range. Whereas this, this looks like a really pretty clean lens. So we've been through everything. We've also taken a look at uh, this eBay seller. Of course, as with buying anything on eBay, you always want to have a look at the seller's feedback. As we can see, sells a lot of items. So this is obviously you know his or her business. Uh, 151 positive ratings, two negative. I always do like to look at the negative ratings just to see what they actually are. Uh, da, da, da. Tracking that hasn't changed in almost two months. Uh, yep, well, that's someone who's bought a lens uh, in the peak of COVID-19 and uh, is wondering why there aren't flights to their country. So that is irrelevant. Lens is dirty. Uh, so this person bought a lens from 1949 and, has and it has dust inside it. I mean, again, that's, that's basically always going to happen. So... Uh, when you're buying something from, from pre-50s era. So I'm not too concerned about that. And again, this, this buyer, whoever this was, probably didn't follow our process, probably bought the slightly cheaper one, which has those little speckles in it. So I'm confident that with those being the only negative ratings, this seller is a good one to buy from. Uh, our good friend Photo Sniper here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is eliminate the listings that I do not want to purchase. So we don't want this one because it had the speckles in the glass. Uh, now this one was not bad, but I think uh, between these two, uh, we also need to eliminate this one. It's actually a little bit of a hard process. Um, this one had the serial number. So let's actually get rid of the one without the serial number which was uh, this one because again let's pretend that we haven't actually contacted the, the seller um, and that generally means that no serial number no purchase for me uh, now we've got to choose between these ones so now this one doesn't come with a case this one does come with a case so immediately I would say that given the Given the insides, given the glass of both of these ones looks, I mean, slightly cleaner favoring towards this one, uh, purely for, for the glass, uh, I would say, but this one's actually more expensive. Um, that could be because he's included the case, whereas this one has no case. So if it's a cheaper listing and it is missing something like a case from an, from another listing then that is a a normal justifiable reason for the price to actually be lower so again you've got to think why have they lowered the price on this one well i think it's actually because this has this one has a case which is obviously worth a little bit of money i mean they're, not, they're leather cases that uh, that don't break so and also the filters um it is quite tricky actually because the only real difference between these two actual lenses themselves is this glass. 
Uh, what I'm going to go and do is just triple check. Yeah, it says the glass is clean, glass is clean. This is a little bit tricky. I'm going to say that I think, I think most of these specs of, of dust, um, I mean, they're probably not on the outside because the guy should actually clean them. So I would actually suggest that out of these two, even though this one has the case, which is, of course, very nice to have, that's not what we're after. We're after a lens that takes good pictures or video, and this glass, this lens's glass looks just slightly cleaner. Um, so we're going to go ahead and narrow it down to this one. So we're down to two. We're down to this Jupiter 6 or this Jupiter 6. So from two different sellers, uh, both reputable sellers, uh, you know, both selling fairly decent stuff. I'm going to go ahead and look at this guy's profile, look at his negative feedback as well. Uh, whatever. Focusing ring stiff. Uh, plenty of dust or scratches. This is what you've got to be careful of, okay? Negative feedback in the past month that said no scratches or dust but there are plenty of scratches. That is that is the sort of dangerous review. Um, so, and particularly when he's buying an Indostar 52, which is a fairly common lens, you know, sent broken, dirty binoculars, lens has some fungus that wasn't in the description, defective item, oil over aperture blades, junk. So, now this doesn't mean that everything that this sell, seller is selling uh, is to this level, but this is quite concerning. This is the exact sort of feedback that I have encountered in the past, and it has turned out to be true. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that this lens is dirty, but it means that this lens has the chance of being dirty if that's the sort of feedback that this person is getting, because 97% are not super high either. So from that, um, I would actually use that little bit of knowledge to eliminate this lens. And that's going to leave us here with uh, Mr. Moscow. So here we go, photo sniper here. This is the lens that we've decided on buying. After that massive process, uh, now, there's only one more step here, and that is we might want to wait. So if you don't actually need your lens right now, then often eBay sellers will either decrease their prices or you can perhaps even, uh, you know, give the seller a message if, uh, if you think, for example, I actually think the shipping is kind of crazy, $150 to ship. Uh, I know from previous experience that this lens doesn't cost 100, it doesn't cost $150 to ship uh, a lens from Moscow, even if it is a 1.5 kilogram lens. So I think perhaps, you know, this is something that you could either wait, wait for it to go down a little bit, but then again, 17 watches. So it's probably good, a good idea to buy it fairly soon. But there you go. So we have just gone through all of the steps required to purchase a Soviet lens, hopefully soon. We will have a Jupiter 6 180mm f2.8 turn up at our doorstep. But that's it for now. I wish everyone good luck in their Soviet lens purchasing quests. Have a good one.